Hi, this is Dennis Sturgeon. I'd like to welcome you to a review of brainstorming fundamentals. It's about how we prepare teams for thinking together. What we're going to cover in this session is the fundamental way that we gather details from subject matter experts, as well as the importance of using a facilitator with process discipline and sticky notes. It's important for us to think about how we get started so that the outcome of this work together is highly productive. What is brainstorming is a great question, and it's an idea gathering process and a method of problem solving. It helps us gather ideas from group members to solve a specific problem, usually posed as an open-ended question. Removing inhibitions is critical and participants need a facilitator to guide people to not edit their own ideas or the ideas of others. It's important that the ideas are contributed spontaneously by the individuals first. Once the ideas are documented, they're always useful. We gather them together in the team or group without criticism and then we prioritize them into subgroups after the brainstorming. Guided brainstorming requires that we set some constraints of perspective and time. People brainstorm individually on each question or issue, and the ideas are then viewed as a group. This stimulates creative thinking in a balanced setting. It helps us remove criticism and guides conversation and discovery. After reviewing multiple ideas, members can group similar ideas prioritize them, and then collectively determine the priorities for action by volunteers. What's in it for you and your team is that it engages team members in cooperation in thinking together. Thinking differently together is better by far than the routine thinking that we do alone. However, it's important that we think alone to start the brainstorming process. It's also very appropriate to appreciate the diverse and multiple perspectives of the team, and we use the basic principles of effectiveness, which are detailed elsewhere, in all of our team interactions. Brainstorming also gives us an opportunity for greater creativity and innovation. It helps us solve problems faster. We get simpler solutions and greater growth and development of the team. It helps us think of possibilities, not just problems. And with guided practice, teams can learn to self-facilitate. The basic rules of brainstorming are listed here. I won't read this slide to you, but I want you to think about some of these key points. We need to include both the individual and the group approaches to brainstorming. The evidence is strong that that works best. We don't ever want to edit our ideas or the ideas of others. We want to make sure that we take breaks with silence. The facilitator should be silent and let people think. We don't want to rush, though time is a factor. We want to make sure that we get the volume ideas. Perfection of the ideas is not the point and perfection gets in the way. We want to stay focused and persistent as a facilitator, even if ideas emerge slowly, and we really need a skilled discussion leader to coordinate the sessions and guide the process with gentle feedback to the members. We want to make sure that we start with an experienced facilitator because structuring the questions is so important. Guiding the process with a clear standard of work is critical. We want to pay close attention to the body language of the participants. One of the critical reasons why in-person brainstorming is so effective. We want to encourage discovery. We want to intervene when criticisms leak in. And for facilitators, you need to prepare your mom or dad voice. We want to make sure too that we keep track of all the ideas and share them with the participants and the sponsors of this brainstorming may make one more point. A misunderstanding or weak application of the method undermines the validity of the results. One of the reasons that team members who want to facilitate future sessions should get a coach to help them practice. 
Stages of brainstorming are fairly simple. We start with preparation. We move on to the all-important question that the team's charged with answering. We want to make sure that we unleash the creativity of all the individuals who participate. We want to make sure that we ask questions to understand and ask the participants to do the same thing. We do grouping of affinities or similar ideas together. Then we do prioritization and then we do documentation. We set the stage for subject matter experts to think freely. Brainstorming is about possibilities, not problems though it can be used to solve problems. We want to make sure that the invitations in person, by email or by phone, we want to make sure that we have a purpose, agenda, and limit. We want to make sure that we remind people of the rules of the session, no criticism. We want to make sure we have the same size sticky notes, same color pens, ask people to use the best printing they can muster, and we ask them to keep one idea per sticky note and one sticky note per idea. The all-important question is that it should always be open-ended. We want to avoid who or why questions because they raise defensiveness and we never want to use yes or no questions because they limit creativity. Our purpose is to unleash individual creativity and we can sometimes begin by phrasing our words and our challenges to the team with if you were king or queen and there were no constraints and then ask the rest of the question. Thinking about being king or queen, the ruler of the land, is a way to get people to start thinking differently. But it's important for us to post blank easel pages to gather sticky notes and ideas, draw out a timeline, fairly simple arrows and times, draw a picture of an idea with a smile, write volume or quantity on an easel, and remind participants of the ground rules. It's always important to keep those in mind. We also want to make sure that we ask questions to understand ideas. We remind people continuously not to criticize themselves or others' ideas. We want to encourage everybody to review the collected ideas and ask questions so that they understand. Sometimes the author's shorthand may be misunderstood or their handwriting. It's also a good idea to say, please elaborate on this one. It's important to share that with the participants. And when brainstorming teams review all the ideas, they can start to group them into affinities as long as they talk about it before they start moving the ideas around. So now what do we do is we take the most important ideas ranked by the participants for further brainstorming and research and new questions to answer. If there's time, the team can do that as long as it fits within the PAL, the purpose, agenda, and limit. At some point, the ideas and decisions and actions can be assigned and documented, and action can be focused on the future with learning and improvement goals for PDSA cycles. This leaves everyone with a clear idea of what's going to happen next. I want to thank you for your kind attention. It's important for us to stay in contact, and if you have ideas or suggestions for improvement, if you have questions that you'd like further clarification on, please contact me by phone or email. I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Thank you.